a lovely evening for a walk. And so peaceful and quiet, too. Uh, yes, very still, except... Except what, dear? Oh, nothing. I just thought I heard some singing. Mm, I didn't hear anything. Oh, perhaps it was our neighbors from across the ravine. Oh, I am getting tired. It's been quite a day. A very sad day. Yes. The news of Peter's death was hard for all of us. But remember, dear, he's home now. I know that. Oh, but it still hurts, doesn't it, John? You and Peter were such good friends. You shared so much together. It's just there are so very few of us left, those that were there with him. I know. That's why you must finish your book. Then, generation to generation, will be able to read for themselves exactly what happened. That's so important. But there's so much material. So much happened in such a short time. How can I possibly put it all down? It, it's very discouraging. Oh, I have faith in you, John. You'll do just fine. Well, you don't mind if I stay out here and work on it for a little while then, do you? Oh, of course not. Of course not. Oh, but John, don't stay out too late. I feel a chill in the air. You go on and get warm, ma'am. I'll be in shortly. All my notes are up here. Now to decipher what God wants written. Oh, so much. So much. So very much. You know, all the books in the world could not possibly hold all the words, the stories, and miracles of Jesus as he walked on earth. Who am I to think that I can put it all down? Go right to the very beginning, John. Start all over. Think it through in your mind. Talk it out loud. You'll be given the words to record. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Yes, yes, this is good. Uh, now, where are my notes about John the Baptist? Oh, here they are. Uh, and this is a testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? I am a voice crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, A man comes after me who is ranked ahead of me because he was here before me. I didn't know him, but I came baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified. And I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me baptizing with water said to me, he upon whom the Spirit descends and remains is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and I've testified that this is the Son of God. Then Jesus went out into the wilderness. My, 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 my. Now, who do we have here? Well, if it isn't the Archangel Michael himself, the messenger of light and love for God. Be gone, evil one. Uh, Michael, aren't you happy to see me? I came all this way just to talk to you. It's, it's been so long since we had a little chat. I've missed you so. I said be gone, Satan. Don't be such a grouch. Anyways, I didn't come to see you. <laughs> I lied. I came to see him. I think not. I think so. No, Michael. I will speak with him now. <laughs> it's my father's will. 
Watch it, snake. I'm watching you. <laughs> I won't be far. I am so scared. So very, very scared. Now, what shall I do? What shall I do? It's been a long time, Jesus. I must say, this human form suits you. Oh, but isn't it awful to get hungry and tired? I mean, you have to sleep now, don't you? <laughs> Oh, come on. I'm just trying to make a little light conversation here. It'd help if you'd give just me a look. Just get on with it, will you? All right. All right. I was just hoping to make this a friendly chat, but I'll cut to the chase. I've got an offer for you. But before I give it to you, would you please eat something? I mean, you've been up here for 40 days and 40 nights without food, and frankly, you look awful. I mean, it makes even me feel guilty. <laughs> If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. You have divine power over this physical world with just a thought. You can do it. I know you can do it. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but from every word that comes from the mouth of God. All right. Suit yourself. Hey, I was just trying to help out. Come here, Jesus. I got something to show you. Come here. Yeah, get right right here. That's great. You'll get right there. <laughs> nice view, isn't it? I thought you might like it up here atop the temple. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not even dash your foot against a stone. Look, Michael and his army are standing right over there, ready to catch you at any second. Come on, show us how great you really are. It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Good God Almighty Jesus. Yes, you finally got that right. You shut up. All right. I'll cut to the chase. I'll tell you why I'm really here. Come, Jesus. Come to me. And I will show you my home your home it's mine i claim it my oh. playground my earth please these are all the kingdoms of the world jesus magnificent aren't they and they're mine all mine every tree valley mountain stream every pleasure known to man is mine because i can make it feel so Good. Look at it, man. Close your eyes and envision the treasure. Feel the power. With man's fear and greed, I can have them at my disposal. Armies, legions, and you could be the ruler of it all. Never-ending wealth, pleasure, riches, glory, Power. Thousands upon thousands of men, women, and children adoring you, worshiping you, praising you, loving you, taking care of your every need, your every desire. And all without you having to suffer that excruciating and meaningless death on the cross. To you, I will give this glory and all this authority. For it has been given unto me, and I can give it to anyone I please. If you then would worship me, this will all be yours. Away from me, Satan! For it is written, worship God and serve him only. <gasps> Be gone! Leave him alone! Oh, this means war, Michael! Oh, I can stop this, Grant, right? I almost have him! I can stop this! You watch me! Leave now, or I'll throw you out! Oh, you frighten me so much, Michael! Be gone, Great Dragon! Uh
honestly, I can't possibly cook for this many people again. Well, you don't have to. We have been invited to a wedding feast tonight. And you're telling me now, at four in the afternoon? Simon, enough is enough. When is Jesus going home? My name is Peter, now Hannah, not Simon. Jesus has remained me Peter. How many times do I have to tell you that? He's now calling me Peter, which means the rock. He will build his church upon me. Your name is Simon, my husband, and I'll build this stove on you if you don't get all these people to leave. Jesus, his mother, his brothers, Philip, Nathaniel, your brother Andrew. There seem to be more and more people coming over every day. And what is this name thing? Peter. Your name is Simon, son of John. You were born Simon. I married Simon. You will die Simon. My name is Peter. Simon. Peter. My name is Peter. Simon. Peter. When is Jesus going home? So we can get back to a normal life. Tomorrow we are going to Capernaum. Who is we? I am going with him, Hannah. He has called me to be one of his disciples. What does a rabbi want with a fisherman? I will be fishing for men. The Savior God promised our father Abraham long ago. Now the Messiah has come and he has, call, he has called me to follow him. I now have a purpose in life. You have a purpose. You're a fisherman and my husband. That's not good enough anymore, Simon? Peter. Oh, come, sit. Rest for a while. We'll get your brother Andrew to take over the fishing business and we'll go to the mountains for a nice long vacation. I don't need a nice long vacation. Well, you need something. You're not acting like yourself. Perhaps you've been in the sun too much. No, woman. Jesus is the Christ, I tell you. I know you like this man. He seems to be a very good man, a very kind man, a true man of God. But we're older now. We've worked so hard all these years. The kids are grown. This isn't fun. Hannah, you are my wife and I love you, but... The Messiah has called me to follow him. Do you know what an honor that is? Some people are following him because they want to be with him, but he called me. Who is that that he would call me? A fisherman, me. Can you imagine? Well, try to understand. I, I need to go with him. I don't know where, I don't know why, but I must go. I have to go. Who's going to cook for you and look after you? And what about mother still so sick with the fever? What do I do if something happens to her? I will ask Jesus to see her. My poor Simon has lost his mind. Fine. Go. Don't give mother and I a second thought. We'll be just fine. We'll get Andrew to take over the fishing business, go to the market, pay the bills. Hannah, I forgot to tell you. Andrew is coming too. Simon, why didn't you tell me? You come back here. Jesus began his ministry that night. At a wedding feast, he performed his first miracle by changing water into wine. And all his disciples believed in him. Jesus called 12 disciples to follow him. Uh, there was Simon, whom he renamed Peter, and his brother Andrew and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. What an odd crew. Let me see. There were four fishermen, a tax collector, Two sets of brothers. Uh, they were all very different people, not alike at all, really. Uh, they came from different class, without title or rank, but they had one thing in common, Jesus. He was rabbi, master. He taught, he inspired, he challenged. He was a friend, uh, someone who listened, really listened and cared. He counseled when needed and consoled in times of weakness and pain. He was a friend. He loved them. He gave them purpose to their lives. Uh, he was also master and, and, and savior who led the way to the kingdom of God. You know, not only were the disciples' lives changed, but thousands of other peoples whose lives he touched in his three short years of ministry. Each had their own unique story to tell.
my name is not important, but I will tell you that I am an officer in the Roman army. This boy is one of my favorite people in the whole world. He's like a son to me, to my entire family, really. A while back, he was very ill. We knew he was dying, and we felt so helpless. We had everything that money could buy, but we could not buy his life. Then one day, someone told me about this Galilean, a Jew, a man named Jesus. They said that he was the son of God and that he could heal my boy. <clears throat> that was my moment of truth. Have you ever had one? Have you ever reached a point in time in your life when you realized that everything you once thought was so blessed important was useless, meaningless? What, what good were all my worldly possessions or my rank if I lost my boy. My entire world was crumbling and my heart was breaking. Do I believe in this God or do I forever reject him? Then it hit me. If Jesus was who they said he was, then he could heal my boy. It's logical. I am in charge of many men. I tell this one to do this and he does. I tell that one to go there, and he does. There are no questions, no arguments, no debates. If this man is truly the Son of God, then he just has to say the word, and my boy will be saved. I went out to find Jesus. I didn't have much time. I knew who he was the moment I saw him. His eyes. His smile. I forced my way through the crowd, and I begged him to please heal my boy. Then Jesus looked at me for a very, very long time, right square in the eye. Not many people will do that because of who I am, but it, it was as if he was searching my soul. But I was not afraid. I believed in him. I had faith in him. Then he spoke. He told me, go. The boy will live. And he did. My boy got well. I was on my way home when I ran into some of my assistants, and they told me that my boy began to get better at the exact moment I had spoken with Jesus the day before. Do you believe that? Well, we do. Myself and my entire household believe that this man is the Son of God. Hi. I have a rather embarrassing story to tell. You see, my husband was never at home and I felt like he didn't love me the way I deserved to be loved. Well, no, I have no excuse for what I did. The truth is, the truth is, I thought I'd fallen in love with another man and I was caught in the act of adultery. And it was awful. You see, I knew by Jewish custom I was to be put to death. A horrible death by stoning. But before the Jewish leaders could gather the stones, they did something out of the ordinary. They brought me before this stranger, this gentle man named Jesus. In his eyes I saw such forgiveness. I just kept staring at him. It was so strange. I saw love flowing from his eyes. It was real love. Not the kind of love I was searching for in other men. And I felt it too. For the first time in my life, I felt real love. Then reality came crashing in on me. The children had finished gathering their stones and were mocking me. And the women, they were enraged. And the men, the very men who were so and so kind to me were ready to kill me. I fell to my knees knowing I was about to die. 
Let the first one among you without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. It was quiet for what seemed like an eternity. I was waiting for the stones to strike. Then, one by one, the people left. No one threw a stone at me. Not even one little stone. Woman, where are they? Is there no one left to condemn you? No one, sir. Then neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That was the day my body and soul were saved. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hey, my name is Andrew. Simon is my Peter, brother. Oh, Peter. Yeah, Peter. <clears throat> well, anyway, this is the other Simon who is also a disciple. Yeah. Well, I just got to tell you a story. It's almost too strange to be true. Well, we were with Jesus down at the Sea of Tiberias, all of us were disciples. Yeah. And uh, man, there was a crowd following him that day. Remember? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were trying to get close to the master. They must have been... 5,000 people. At least. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. And it, and it was getting late mm -hmm. and we were getting hungry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Philip told Jesus that he would take six months' salary to go out and buy food for everybody. <laughs> but hey, stuff like that never concerns yeah. Jesus. Nah, nah. But I spotted a boy up there who had five barley loaves and two fish. And well, I was kind of hoping at least we could go over yeah. and buy it off of him so at least some of us could get something to eat. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, you know, mm -hmm. look out for number one. And, and I was, yeah, and as I was thinking this, Jesus took the loaves and fish, and he, after he gave thanks, he distributed to everybody who was seated, all 5,000 people. And he told them to take as much as they wanted. And they did. Andrew, <laughs> I still can't and, believe this next part. Tell them. Oh, man. After everyone was satisfied, Jesus told us that. Uh, hey, guys. Oh, hey, Master. Why don't you guys go get all the leftovers so that nothing may be lost? Oh, okay. Well, do you know that we collected 12 baskets full of food after that? 12? Man. How do you do that? Well, I don't quite know. But he sure made a believer out of me. Yeah, me too. I just wish he wouldn't speak in riddles all the time about the kingdom of God. Parables. Say what? They're not riddles, they're parables. Whatever, I just get really confused, okay. that's all. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Let's go see what the father said. Did you see what happened to that fig tree talking yeah. the other day? Man, I couldn't believe that, whoa, man, good gracious. My name is Mary. Jesus. He's my boy. I just smile when I tell people that. I am so proud of him. Can't believe he's so grown up already. Why, it seems only yesterday that the angel Gabriel came to me and told me that I had been chosen to be the Messiah's mother. I felt so unworthy. I still do. Why me? But oh, what a joy. What a thrill to hold the Son of God and my little baby boy in my arms. And now just look at him. Jesus stayed home and took care of all of us until he was about 30. I don't know what I would have done without Jesus had he not been there to take over Joseph's carpentry business. He never seemed to get restless, but I could tell that he was about ready to move on. 
Mothers noticed little things like work orders were being redelegated, provisions were being stored up, and other duties were being reassigned. And when he looked at me and smiled, it was just a few moments longer. And when he hugged me, it was a little tighter. Funny, isn't it? When your children are little, it seems like they're always tugging at your apron strings and you just want to say, shoo, shoo. And then they grow up and they tug at your heart strings and you want to keep them with you forever. But you know you've got to let them go. It was after a wedding in Cana that Jesus left home to begin his ministry. That was the real reason God sent him into the world. Oh, I followed him for a while. I had to be sure he was all right. He was. Oh, there's one thing more. When Jesus was a little baby, one day I took him to the temple. And Simeon, the high priest, told me the strangest thing. He said, listen carefully. This child shall be rejected by many people in Israel, but he will be of the utmost joy to many others. The deepest thoughts of many hearts shall be revealed, but a stone a sword shall pierce your soul. I think I felt that pierce the day that Jesus left home. My Peter, well, you Simon. Jesus renamed me Peter, which means the rock. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. People call me a bit fiery and impulsive, but no, I'm not, not really. I just know what I want and where I'm going. That's all. Oh, but don't get me wrong. It wasn't always easy to follow him. You see, I really do miss the good life. I was once a well-to-do fisherman on the Sea of Galilee. And Hannah and all her household took very good care of me. There wasn't much that I wanted or needed, but I always felt empty, like something was missing. But then the master found me and I knew who I was. My name is Peter. My faith is strong and I know who he is. You are the Christ, son of the living God. I once walked on water for him. For a few steps. Jesus always talked about going away and leaving me, leaving us. But he's not going anywhere. I will lay down my life for him. Will you, Peter? Will you lay your life down for me? I'll tell you the truth. Before this night is over, before the cock crows, you have denied me three times. But if I was to die for you, I would never deny you. My name is Mary. I'm from Magdala. I owe everything to Jesus. My sanity, my life, my very soul. Seven devils lived in me for years. I don't remember much about those days, but people tell me I did strange things. My entire town treated me as an outcast. I think they were afraid to help me. You know, if someone got too close, they might get sick too. I didn't blame them. But I was lonely and frightened, and no one knew how much it hurt to be such an outcast. And my mind was always in torment. I gave up hope. I wanted to die. Then I met Jesus. 
I remember him coming towards me and I began to shake in complete panic. Something inside me knew who Jesus was long before my mind ever did. I cried out for help. Then Jesus spoke and the torment left. I know this might sound odd to some of you, but the most amazing feeling came over me then. It was love, peaceful love, God's love. I never knew such a feeling existed. I was even possible. I glowed from the inside where fears of terror once made their home. And I knew everything was going to be all right. Jesus came into my life and made me whole. I'm alive. I am alive. You don't know what that feeling is like unless you've ever been dead. And here, I do. And I know I would never feel that abandoned or crazy again. I left my home and I followed Jesus along with Susanna, Joanna, and other women. We provide food and daily care for Jesus and his disciples. I will do anything for him, for what he has done for me. I will always be there for you. Promise? I promise. I promise. Jesus healed the sick. He made the lame to walk, gave sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf. Withered limbs he made whole and fractured minds he repaired. He performed all these miracles so that man might come to him for complete healing, the healing of the soul and the resurrection of the body thereafter. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Everyone who lives in me, though they die, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. After three years, Jesus' ministry was complete. He then began to prepare himself for what would be the world's greatest sacrifice, his own death on the cross. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a meal for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume, made a pure nard, anointed his feet and wiped them with her hair. The whole house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii? And the money, uh, the money given to the poor. Oh, he said this, not because he cared about the poor. No, because he was a thief. He used to keep the common purse and would steal what was put into it. 
she bought it she, so she might keep it for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor. You will not always have me. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. Look at the crowds. Look how they love you, Jesus. Look at the power you have. The whole world has gone after you. Just think where we can go from here. Judas, how many times must I tell you my kingdom is not of this world? Stupid, stupid man. He's throwing away a gold mine. Oh, I say, dear fellow, you seem awfully upset. Might I be of some assistance? Who are you? <laughs> no one, really. Just a friend. Whatever is troubling you, sir? Jesus. Oh. He's throwing away a gold mine. He could take over this city. He could take over the entire whole world if he wanted to. But no. All these lofty ideals of his. He's so heavenly-minded that he's for no earthly good whatsoever. Oh, don't get me wrong, he means well. He's really a good person. Just not too world-wise, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, indeed I do. I, I had some dealings with him once, and he made the same stupid, idealistic decision then. Really? When? Oh, <laughs> long before you knew him. I say, I've got an idea. What? What would you say to, well, you and I, Perhaps making a little money off this parade here today? Hmm? Yeah. What do you have in mind? Well, come with me and we'll talk. You see, I think you're exactly the person that I need for the thing that I would like to try. Now, there is some money in it for you. The Absolutely. next few days went by so fast. Uh, Jerusalem was buzzing in preparation for Passover, just like it does every year. The disciples were also busy preparing for what they thought would be just another Shabbat. No one knew just how different things would be that year. On Thursday evening, Jesus called his disciples together for what would be their last meal together. It was a special supper prepared by the Lord himself, not a mere meal of bread and wine. No, Jesus shared himself that night and instructed his disciples to continue on the tradition in remembrance of him. Everyone felt very, very happy to be there. Everyone except Judas who was deep in thought, drinking from the Lord's own cup when suddenly he just got up and left. No one really thought much about it at the time. After dinner, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kindred Valley to a place where there's a garden. There he prayed for a long time. Then it became suddenly, it became quite clear where Judas had gone for with a kiss, 
a brother's kiss, he betrayed his Lord. A detachment of soldiers came together with the police from the chief priests and Pharisees to take Jesus away. They first took Jesus to Annas, the high priest. The courtyard was cold, very cold. Peter and another disciple went in. You are one of his disciples, are you not? I am not. Meanwhile, the high priests and Pharisees questioned Jesus about his teachings and his disciples. Are you sure you're not one of his disciples? I am not, I tell you. I spoke openly to the world. I taught in the synagogues or the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me now? Ask those who heard what I said. They will tell you. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. If I said something wrong, testify to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, then why did you strike me? I'm sure I saw you with him in the garden. I tell you, I do not know the man. <laughs> Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers wove a, a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and put a purple robe on him. Pilate washed his hands of the whole situation for he found no case against Jesus. But still the people cried for Jesus to be crucified. So carrying his own cross, he went out to a place called the Place of the Skulls, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him!
Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. I will never forget what you did for me, Jesus. You were so kind, so good, so caring. I will always love you. Come now, Simon. I cannot bear to see him die. I denied him, Hannah. He taught me everything I knew. He, he loved me. He believed in me. Now he was always, always there for me, and I denied I knew him. Maybe he didn't see you? No. He knew it would happen. He said it would happen. Oh, how could I do that? He knew you were frightened? No. No, you don't understand. For three years, I followed him. He believed in me. He taught me. My life had meaning. I had my purpose in life. And now since this has happened, what am I going to do? Come now. Simon, come now. How, how can I go anywhere, Hannah? I mean, what shall I do? Where shall I go? I don't even know who I am anymore. You are Peter. your son. No, no. I want you. No. John. No. Yes, Lord. Beside you is your mother. No. I will take care of her. Oh, I promise, Lord. Oh, this day I know the true meaning of Simeon's words. And the sword shall pierce your soul. Oh, God. I'm thirsty. Can you eat something to drink? Please, someone get him something to drink. Oh Lord, I can't help you and you did everything for me. Do they know who you are? Do they know what they are doing? What will we do without you now? Where will we go? Where will we turn to? I'm so frightened. It's getting so dark. Everyone is leaving. I don't know what to do. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Betrayed, abandoned, cursed, humiliated, scorned, scourged. Crucified, rejected, forsaken, 
by those he loved, by those he came to save. It was too much to bear. It is finished. The party's over, it's time to call it a day. Hey, Mikey, what's the matter? Oh, bad day. Hmm. It is not over, foul one. Not by a long shot. <laughs> foul one? Ew, touchy, touchy. Well, it looks over to me. Jesus was born, Jesus lived, Jesus died. End of story, at least for the time being. Why, what a short-sighted shadow you tried to cast. Do I have to remind you who you're dealing with? Dealing with, schmealing with. Jesus is no longer around. So today is my crowning glory. Watch it. I mean it, Mikey. What a fool. I offered Jesus ownership of every kingdom in the world. Everything. Every single man, woman, Child, mountain, forest, lake, glen, tree, bug, bee. Not to mention never-ending wealth and every ever-loving pleasure imaginable. All he had to do was worship me once. Just once. I could have saved him all that agony today. <laughs> yeah, it was good to see him squirm. <laughs> you know what? Jesus almost backed out of it last night. He was this close, man. He was sweating bullets of blood. It was great. He did not <laughs> almost back out. He was merely feeling the weight of the world sin on his shoulders. His tremendous love for humankind came with a great price attached to it. Now leave me alone and let me wait it out in peace. Wait? Wait for what? The dawn of the third day. <laughs> For Jesus Christ to raise from the dead again and sit at the right hand of God. <laughs> the messenger of love and light. Oh, Michael, you have always been such an optimist. It makes me sick. Then you are nothing more than man's fear and dread, wrapped up in a pitiful little package of despair with a serious case of denial. Oh, don't underestimate me, Michael. I am very real. Yes, and so is the darkness. But you know what? It disappears when the sun rises. It's a cloudy day today. Hmm? Nonetheless, God's son is dead, rendering mankind doomed. And by their own doing, no less. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you, man. That, that is poetry. It's all part of God's plan. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll forgive me if I fail to see the wisdom in that design. Why does that not surprise me? Aha, very funny. Anyway, Michael, do you really expect me to believe that God is going to save his chosen people after they murdered his son? Listen, evil one, no matter how many times they turn their back on God, he will never turn his back on them. He is faithful, and he loves them. Why? Because he is. He is... The great I am. Oh, would you stop talking in Today riddles? the sins of humankind were forgiven for all of eternity. All people have to do is accept that fact, and they can be saved. God's grace was made manifest through His Son, Jesus. I'm sure you're going to find a few folks who'll buy that for the little sins, but not for the big ones. There are no bigger little sins. You and I both know all sins are equal in the eyes of God. But not in the minds of man, kiddo. They got them ranked, filed, and color-coded. Color-coded. 
color coded. Oh yeah, the little bitty white lines. They where we don't count. Just the big, deep, dark, black sins of everybody else. Oh, honest. Oh, I mean it, Mikey. They cuss and they swear, <gasps> but not in front of the children. They don't worship on the Sabbath when they're at the beach or when they're playing golf or when they're just too tired. Four. But they would stone their neighbor to death in a heartbeat for committing adultery. Now, am I right or what? <sighs> People are blinded by their own weaknesses, Michael. They can only see the weakness in the other guy, never with himself. <gasps> did you see what she did? Oh, I bet you would never do that. Oh, gossip, gossip, gossip. You know, Michael, I can understand why the... Jesus got so irritated with the Pharisees. What a bunch of hypocrites. Well, I guess if people were so perfect, there'd be no need for God's ultimate sacrifice. Now, would there? The blood of the Lamb has forgiven them. The blood of the Lamb. God will not be mocked, Satan. And neither will I. I am Lucifer, the most brilliant and the most beautiful of all created beings in heaven. You, you are nothing. Like the ancient kings of Tyre, you parade yourself around like a king of heaven under God against whom you rebelled. One with the true seal of perfection, full of wisdom and beauty. You are God's anointed one who he put on the holy mountain to walk amongst the stones of fire. Blameless from the day you were created until the time unrighteousness was found in you. I am fear. I am pride. I am the ruination of every soul who succumbs to me, Michael. I will ascend to heaven. I will also sit at the mount of the assembly. I will raise myself above the stars of God. I will also be where God is. I am the me that doesn't need God! <laughs> <laughs> and for that very reason, you and all those that are sucked in by your illusions are, do are doomed for eternity. Your egotistical proclamations cannot and will not save you. You see, fear is not greater than love, and darkness will always give in to the light, God's light. God's love. Such relative terms. Love, light, right, wrong. So easy to miss. No, they're not. God is love. And his righteousness overflows to all those who will accept it. You see, fear is the author of sin. And it is sin that will disturb, deprave, betray, and destroy all that it touches. Yes. I know. That's the point. And it is so easy. I do nothing, really, and yet I get accredited. Blamed? <laughs> well, yes. Blamed for mankind's own greed. People are so gullible, Michael. They're so easily misled by their own intellectual grandeur, by what they own, by what they know even by their own interpretation of salvation. <laughs> Such lofty, philosophical ideals. I really am amused just to sit back and watch them destroy themselves. Metaphorically speaking, of course. Oh, please. Oh, Michael, I mean it. People are blind. Wake up and smell the coffee. And besides, God's still got to pull off this little charade he staged here today, and I have my doubts. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> listening? Listening to what? I don't hear anything. Anyway, as I was saying, Michael, I've won. You better get used to it. <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure, Satan. Michael? Michael? Oh, what is that noise?
crying. Someone has taken my Lord and carried him away and I do not know where they've taken him. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Sir, if you've carried him away, please tell me where you've carried him and I will take him away. Mary. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This, this is the story of Jesus. And how do I know? Because I am that disciple. I saw all these events and I've recorded them here. And everyone knows that my account is accurate. And I suppose that if all the other events in Jesus' life were written down, the world could scarcely hold the books. John, are you still out there? Yes, Mother. I just finished. It came back so clearly to me, just like when it happened. Oh, John, I'm so happy for you. I'm happy for us all. Uh, are you all right? You're freezing cold. No, no, I'm fine. But why don't we go inside and you can read to me all that you've written down? Uh, what's the matter, Mother? You seem frightened. No, no, no. I'm all right. I was just worried about your being out here alone, that's oh, all. Oh, I wasn't alone, Mother. I'm never alone. Oh, I know that. It's just that I get concerned. It's so cold and dark and eerie out here. I'm so afraid of losing you. I know that's silly of me, but oh, I get so afraid. Of you don't need to be frightened. It's probably just the wind picking up. Yes. Uh, no one's going to off him. Besides, it's just an illusion, remember? Couldn't hurt a flea. Hmm. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. Christ's life, death, and resurrection have been recorded for all of eternity. And it doesn't matter? Nope, it doesn't matter. My, my, my. Could it be that the great serpent is going to fade into obscurity? <laughs> Don't be so smug, Michael. Great legends never die. 
Surely you must know my nature better than that by now. No, I said it doesn't matter, because I have realized a different plan that will make the truth not matter. Jesus is the truth. They will forget. <laughs> I am. I'm way ahead of you, Michael. You see, I've got a long-term plan that's already set into motion that will deceive the faint of faith and make multitudes believe that the life of Jesus was all a fairy tale. <laughs> yes. And there will also be multitudes who will believe in the divine Christ, even though they've never seen him. They'll go throughout the world and preach the gospel. You see, great truths never die either. Some may believe today, but they will doubt in time. Soon there'll be so many different takes on the life and ministry of Jesus, it'll make your head spin. Oh, will you ever stop? <laughs> no! It's all so clear. You see, disagreements about the word will create quite a stir among your righteous men in mass. I predict crusades that will influence the downfall of nations. Yes, and God-fearing people will step in and rebuild new and righteous ones in their place. Moral standards will be corrupted and human resources wasted. There will be those who rise above temptation and give back to their fellow man. There will be entire nations that will, that will revel in their promiscuity and they will destroy entire kingdoms of the earth. Yes, but their godly will stand firm and lead their families in righteousness. And there will be fire, flood, earthquake, storm, pestilence, disease. Millions of lives will be devastated and they'll blame it all on me. Yes, and there will also be <laughs> inventors, teachers, peacemakers, medical healers of the sick and afflicted, and they will give the glory back to God. Husbands, wives, sisters, brothers, mothers, fathers, and their precious little babies will fall to untimely death. Who are you to pronounce the will of God? Every life, every life is in God's hand. He has a plan for you, even though you cannot see it, even though you can't understand it. In his mighty arms you will rest, and he will mend the broken hearts of those left behind. Do you think the mourners will still come to your God in their grief? No, they will blame him. They'll say it's his fault. Oh, such parodies. Yes, well, we are not to question God, only to trust him. Why? For what? For justice? There will be none. The shameless will become great and the depraved wealthy. The hungry will starve while the obese throw away food. One year flood, the next year drought. Entire nations will glorify sexual promiscuity, glamorize gluttony, sympathize with murderers, and promote killing each other. <laughs> this is so much fun, and that's just the beginning. Yeah, see, Michael, people are going to learn how to do, rationalize, to do anything they want to do. Yes, and by God's grace through faith are they saved. <laughs> oh, wait. Now, where does that leave you? You see, God's people... God's can't people? God's people? Who are they? There'll be so many splinter groups, it'll make your head spin. It doesn't matter. Each. Each denomination will chastise the other with sanctimonious admonitions. With Bible in hand, they will prove that they, and they alone, have the liturgically correct interpretation of the Scripture. Probably. People's faith will wane from time to time, and they'll rely heavily on their own understanding, which is limiting. In fact, yes, there will be those who claim that they know the one true interpretation of the scriptures. They'll think they know the mind of God. But they don't. And neither do you. But still, it doesn't matter. Michael, I'm surprised at you. I never said man wasn't arrogant. Not the arrogant part, the it doesn't matter part. Could it be that you're finally seeing things my way? Don't be absurd, demon. What I mean is this. It doesn't matter if church people work on the Sabbath. It doesn't matter if they've been walking in the paths of saints all their lives or stumbling through the valleys of temptation. And I've got news for you. It doesn't even matter if they are prostitutes, thieves, gamblers, embezzlers, murderers, or even the great Pharisees. It doesn't matter. 
They are God's children. He loves them. He wants to hold them in his arms when they hurt, to pick them up when they stumble and help them live up to their purpose in life. And when they die, he wants them to come home. Home. Where they can live with Jesus for eternity. Oh, Michael, with guilt and shame, men and women alike will sink to great depths of degra degradation. So low, they won't even know to ask your God for forgiveness. They won't know what to do. They'll be trapped in their own feelings of unworthiness. You know, sometimes it is when people fall to their knee that they finally look up. And when they do, they will see God with his arm outreached to them. You see, with one simple prayer, they can find renewed faith, enough to start all over again. And that is the glory and the beauty of grace. It can't be bought. It can't be earned. It's a gift from God. <laughs> now that's going to go over real well with the holy rollers who try to please God with every action. Oh, come on, Michael. They're going to feel ripped off. They're going to play judge and jury and decide who can go to heaven and who can't based on who they loved or how they worshipped God. Now that's power, baby! <laughs> over the years, men and women will argue over scriptures. In fact, they will interject their own needs, social rules, spiritual limitations on what's been recorded. There will even be those that create religious rituals and cling to the ritual instead of clinging to the one for whom they were created. But when it gets right down to it, to the nitty-gritty, it doesn't matter! Oh. <laughs> because, you see, Satan, to be saved, people don't have to believe in miracles, or angels, or spiritual rituals, or predestination, or even in you. <laughs> because what matters is this, and only this, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It'll never fly. By God's grace through faith are they saved. Period. That's it. <laughs> nothing more. And there's nothing you can do about it.
I know that many of you are just as moved by this as I was. I was here last night, as I said this morning, this was superb and God was very present tonight. I'd like to thank our technicians at the back. We have so many people who made this possible, but again, we've mentioned already. Susan is the one who brilliantly wrote this, and we are so grateful for God's gifts to her. God has used her in so many ways, and we're so grateful to you, Susan. This lady never ceases to amaze me. She is so wonderful, so gifted, and does so many things we do not ever appreciate because she's behind the scenes. But I want to take a moment to especially recognize this dear lady, Judy, who means so much to so many of us. And Mr. Iger, where's Tony? Get Tony. You know Tony so well, he was so calm. <laughs> In all of this, when we had staff meetings, he shared with us all of the opportunities for spiritual growth that he had. And we're so grateful to you, Tony, for all your wonderful ministry with us, and we are blessed because of you and your vision. He was the one who suggested we do this again. We're so grateful to you, Tony. It's been a real pressure, I mean pleasure. <laughs> And again, and again, the cast would like to thank them too. Just to let you know we have services this week at noonday service, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at noon. Then of course we have on Monday, Thursday a program and then again five services on Easter Day. So God bless you in this holy week. Thank you.